and welcome to yet another virtual happy hour with uh, me, Phil Clark, uh, from the Britain Yankee Craft Beer Podcast, and Mr. Jay Rizicki over there from Malted Tales. Jay, what are you drinking today? Oh, today I am drinking a little bit of Pollyanna's Lexco Gap. Oh, a classic, I guess, now. A glass that I personally designed for our October or a Halloween party two years ago. Pretty darn at, proud of it. Up at Roselle? Yes, in Roselle. Up at Roselle one. Okay. Oh, well, that's great. And then I hear you have to be a little bit careful with your beer because uh, yesterday yeah. was a tragedy. Trashed my laptop, my other laptop, yesterday. Hopefully they can fix it because that one's a lot better than this one. Okay, good. And then uh, below me in the Hollywood Square, or I guess we should call this the Illinois Square, uh, Mr. Ken McMullen looking all bright and white there. What's going on, Ken? What are you drinking, man? I'm sitting right by the window here in the bar, so it's sunlight is uh, washing me out. I'm having one of these. Ah, hot vine can. And what is in that yep. can? I've got my brew monkey again. I, I love this stuff. It's fermenting and it's just delicious. I keep drinking it out of the fermenter. All right. Well, good stuff. And of course, uh, the person we haven't introduced and what everybody's been looking at, apart from us guys, is the lovely Catherine Velo. Is it, did I get that right, by the way? Very close. It's Vallow rhymes with shallow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I, when Chris uh, Vallow came on to the show a while back, I had that conversation with him as well, and I haven't learned anything. So welcome to the show, Catherine. You are from Exit Strategy down in Forest park i am indeed i always get that confused with river forest that's why i can never find you i always go to the wrong town we are like the cousin of river forest and oak park we just got the back half of each name so we're like the the cousin of them the cool. blue collar cousin of them yeah well we'll come to you in just a second you got to find out what i'm drinking i'm drinking from uh minnesota actually a hammer heart brewing company a uh, beer called uh, Gorm the Old, and that actually is a mesquite smoked ale, a Roush beer. And of course, for those of you who know me, I love the Roush beers. And I didn't do a very good job pouring that. I got a lot of head, but that's all right. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let us find out uh, how things have been going at Exit Strategy, because I believe you had uh, a visitor the other day, uh, uh, this guy over here on the right. I did. I did. That guy came in, he bought some of the Scottish ale, which is lovely. And I bought this beautiful shirt. He did. What gave you the idea for the shirt? Um, we were thinking about what the next steps were after we were closed by the state. Um, that order came through on March 15th and the wheels started spinning of how do we keep everything alive and what do we do here now? How do we make, um, how do we make new normal feel kind of okay? Um, so we were just playing around and we said, all right, we need to plan out our survival strategy. And that just kind of became a kitschy little thing. And I did the graphic on Instagram and um, we said, you know what? This is it, man. Like we need to figure out a way to survive in this current climate and in order to do that, we need a lot of different tools. And the t-shirt became one of the tools. And then the t-shirt turned into um, a beer that Chris and Sean, his assistant in the brew house, brewed uh, this past week. Um, they did another juicy IPA that's going to be fantastic. It is going to be released in cans uh, when we reopen, whenever that may be. I have a goal in my head, but I don't know if we're going to hit it. Well, that's really uh, good news that at least you've got the goal in your head to, yeah. you know, get things reopened. Um, you said you were going to put that in a can. How are you getting your beer out to people now? Currently, we're just doing growler sales. Um, two weeks ago, we opened up and did growler sales. We went through 98 growlers in five hours, which was um, humbling and impressive and a lot of beer to push out the door in five hours. Uh, and we went through 157 six packs in those five hours. So we are out of cans currently. Uh, we got a new shipment of growlers in. We are filling growlers left, right, and center. We're uh, open today and then tomorrow. And we are going to assess where we're at with our growler supply. 
and if it looks like a safe choice to stay open filling growlers or if the safer play both in the business sense to maintain our levels of product and make sure we have something to open with um and then in the broader social sense of staying open we're going to see if those things make sense and if we close down for a little while and you know, we, we'd see how everything's going in the outside world or if we stay open with the growler sales. Um, Ken, you've got growlers there. Uh, sorry, not growlers. You've got cans. You just showed us. <laughs> um, are you okay? Oh, you do have growlers as well. Okay. And can. So are you finding the supplies of cans uh, easy to obtain or have you just not got through your supply right now? I haven't had to look yet. Um, we've, we've, we're still pretty good. Um, we just started doing cans, so I'm not even sure most people know we have them. But it, it seems like there's plenty of brewers that are willing to share their supply with, with each other, too. Yeah. Are you finding that you need, might need more cans and you're looking to get those supplies, Catherine? Um, we have a canning line that comes in. We use Midwest Mobile Canning. Um, so we've hooked up with them already. We have a canning date set in early May. So survival strategy will be canned. We'll do those in 12 ounce cans and then, in, um, get those guys into six packs and, and that will be our grand reopening slash super late anniversary party beer. So Kathy, what, yeah, go ahead, Jay. obviously are in Forest Park, but, um, what made you decide on the actual location you're at? Why Forest Park? Why not somewhere else? Oh. We, no joke, live, eat, sleep, play, all the things in Forest Park. Um, we have been residents of the village for, oy, God, we've been married almost 20 years. I got it. We got 16 Good Lord. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got 16 years or so in Forest Park. Uh, I taught in the school district here for 15 years. And this particular building just happened to be on my way to school every day. And before we were open, before it was even, I mean, it was just this like dilapidated gross building on the corner of Jackson and Madison. And when we decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on opening up the tap room and the brewery, I was like, well, this, I mean, it's three blocks from the house. It's in the center of town. It's a little bit off the strip on Madison and Forest Park, which is nice because it makes it a little bit more destination-y. And it also kind of separates it as its own entity uh, Forest Park is a lot of different bars and we are kind of our own thing being where we are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we got an appointment and came in and looked at her. Um, I, I've gendered the space for years. She's just a she, like a ship. Um, so we, we came in and she needed a whole lot of love. And uh, yeah, we didn't have to do any demo because there was nothing here. There's not a thing in the world here. Skylights were hanging from the ceiling. I mean, nature was coming in. We had, we just, it was, it was bad shape, but now it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I do like the location. The only downside is my ex-wife came from Forest Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You had to bring that up. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, but I, I love Forest Park. Like I didn't really start drinking until I was in my thirties, but I would go to Madison street with my friends and I was always a designated, designated driver because I always had a van. And we'd go to um, McGaffey's or what's the McGaffey's. one? Yeah. yeah. Go there and hit some other places, um, Shanahan's. And, you know, by 1, 2 in the morning, I'm rolling guys, my friends out in my van. And I'd have puke buckets ready for them because I didn't want to puke in my van. And I'd drive them all home. Neat. So, so yeah. one thing we didn't ask you, Catherine, was uh, what are you drinking? So I have Judgmental Dick. Uh, it's our double IPA. Um, this has got to be, I mean, picking a favorite beer is like picking a favorite child, but this, uh, this guy's got to be one of my, my most favorites that we do. Um, it's got a great balance of hops. It's an 8%, which is an approachable double. Um, there's no astringency on it, and we use honey at the back end of the brewing process to kind of round out the beer so it doesn't do that stingy bite back here. There's just a teeny tiny touch of sweetness that really rounds it out. Um, yeah, I love this beer. I love it. And, and it's and, is pretty great. And actually, that's one of my, well, probably my favorite from you guys, uh, because I like a real IPA, and that's a real IPA. You get a little pininess with it, but you're, I, 
now you talk about that sweetness. That's that's what really kind of uh, put sets it apart. Which is nice, yeah, because it doesn't. I think one of the things I'm most proud of when it comes to our portfolio of beers, um, Chris does a fabulous job. Um, and one of the things he does really well is he he brews beers that don't linger about. I don't feel like we have any palate wreckers in our portfolio, so you can taste about all of the different things that we've got to offer, which is nice without anything lingering on the palate, which, I mean, you know, you can go from the wit to the IPA to the stout and you're totally fine. That is awesome. And I also think that I wouldn't name a beer that, but palate record could be a name of a beer. Right. <laughs> what were you drinking yesterday, Jay? Um, Scotch Squatch. Oh well, yeah. The one I got from you guys was, yes, it was definitely a Scotch, the Scotch Squatch. I just call it the Scotch Yale because it is my favorite from you guys, but the judgmental dick, and I didn't remember this. I should have gotten some of that because I forgot you guys having the honey on the back. And now what you were saying that I'm like, now I remember that beer because I haven't had it in a couple of months. I forget certain characteristics. So I'm like, damn it. So mm -hmm. I'll be back to get some of that. Yeah, this is, I think it's the coolest part of the beer is just like that, just that little tiny hint of sweetness. And I always get real hesitant to use the word sweet when we're talking about beer, because then people are like, oh, they don't drink sweet beer. And like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. A little bit of honey just to round out some of the, like the resiny notes and, and you know, the, the just astringency and the happiness and the bitterness. It's just a nice balance. For sure. I gotta tell you, exit strategy was the last, that was the last bar I sat at and had a beer before the shutdown happened. Mm -hmm. Um, Kevin Herbst and I went down to uh, pick up our pick up my uh, cask from Day of the Living Ales, and on the way back we stopped at Exit Strategy. So it's nice to see it. Uh, man, it's weird not being able to go sit at any bars. Isn't it? It's 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 surreal. It kind of it breaks my heart to see all that. Like the chairs are all up off the floor, and like there's like a weird path from the side door up to the bar for growlers with tape lines on the floor and I mean we get it we're doing what everything that we should be doing but man it's so weird yeah well I think you'll find that your uh, regulars and hopefully a few more people who don't know about you but maybe see this will stop by and pick up uh, some beer from you um, we try to keep these down to uh, uh, about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. We're coming up on our time because now you can see I have the time, gentlemen, please, Bill. Time, gentlemen, please. Haven't you got homes to go to? Come on, back home to your wives. Which means that the pub is closing for the day. We hope to uh, see you uh, back in action. And maybe we can get Chris on the next time. Me. He, should, he should sit in the background though i think definitely <laughs> I, I, agree. I agree chris is a beautiful person but Catherine's a little more beautiful so <laughs> <laughs> well we do like you ken as well oh thank you yeah yeah <laughs> even though you, you know you you're practicing to be father christmas now aren't you santa claus yeah you like that's yeah, is it is it going to be, you're not going to cut it until Christmas? Originally, it was just for the winter, and now it's kind of become, oh, this table shaking, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of become the, the shutdown beard. Yeah, it's kind of become a shutdown beard, so I'm just letting it go, trimming up the flyers on the side, but we'll see. <laughs> Obviously, you're keeping it because Mario Tricocci's closed till this is all over with. <laughs> personal uh, uh, yeah. for air person. That's the last thing I can imagine. Ken at <laughs> Mario Tricocci's. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> anyway, yes. uh, we raise our glasses and say cheers from me. Cheers from me and cheers from him. Cheers <laughs> from me. Thank you, Catherine, for coming on. We hope you will the very best. Give our best to Chris. I will. And, uh, Thank you guys so much for letting me chat about the business and what's going on and all that good stuff. It was uh, fun having you on, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. We'll hey, be right here. Do the five. Oh, five year anniversary. Exit turns five. Oh, no, actually, I meant do the oh. five for the coronavirus. <laughs> but yes, do the five. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. All the best. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Cheers. All right.
Cheers.